So how do you test your honeybee hive for varroa mites? Today I'm going to use the Varroa Easy Check device to show you how to do just that. Now let's go to the apiary and find out how to do it. Wait, 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 wait. So why do you want to test for Varroa in the first place? Well, I don't have Varroa. I can't see them. I have really strong hives. I can see the amount of bees that are coming in. I can't possibly have Varroa mites. Well, I split my hives. Doesn't that count as a brood break? I'm sure I don't have Varroa mites. I only have one hive. I'm not going to worry about treating because I'm sure I don't have Varroa mites. These are just a few of the excuses that we all use to justify not treating or testing for Varroa mites. Because as you'll see, it's kind of a process, especially when you have three to five to seven supers on your beehive and you want to test them in July. It's kind of a lot of work, but it's just part of being a beekeeper. So let's go do it. So here's the supplies I'm going to be using. Um, a little bus tub from the dollar store, uh, the Varroa Easy Check, a little one cup measuring cup and some isopropyl alcohol is all you will need to do the varroa mite test. So we're going to open up this hive here. It's got two supers on it. We'll put our tub right here. Today is not the optimum day to be doing this because the bees are not flying. It's raining. It's kind of cold. But this is the day we have to do it, so it's been raining for quite a few days. We have about 12 inches more rain than normal. So this is what we're going to have to do. I'm going to try to take both of these off at the same time so I don't disturb them. Let's grab the lid from another hive real quick so I can use it. So they don't uh, crush a bunch of bees. I crack this open. It's very heavy. But that's the easy way to do it. Definitely want to have your smoke on a day like today. Because you're going to be tearing open their hive. They're not happy. Haven't been flying. So definitely use some smoke on a day like today. And I'm not being as gentle as I normally would. I'm trying to go fast because there's almost some impending rain coming and I don't really want to get uh, all my camera equipment wet. So I'm moving fairly quickly. This is all going to make some noise here. So now we're going to pull out a couple of frames. And uh, if we find the queen, I'll put her off to the side here. Hopefully we find her before we shake our bees into the tub. You don't always have to find her, but you should be pretty darn sure that you're not putting her in the alcohol and killing her. So if you shake her and she's in there, you can see her, you can just put her back. But for beginners, uh, we recommend that you uh, find the queen before you do any shaking of your frames. But like I said, today, the inclement weather, I may just go for it. And I'm pretty good at finding the queen on the frame because I've been doing this for a while. So this frame is an amazing frame. It's all full of pollen. So you can also do a little inspection here. But like I said, I'm not going to go too crazy today because the bees are not happy that I'm in there. But this is a very full hive. As you can see, they're bubbling up to the top. There's two supers on top of this. And you're probably asking why don't you just test the bees that are up in the super? Why are you taking this all apart, especially when the weather is bad? Well, the reason is that the best place to find the mites is on the bees that are close to the brood. Because what happens is the varroa mites ride a hitch a ride on the bees, on their backs. They puncture the exoskeleton and they eat their hemoglobin, which 
just like blood. And then as soon as the cell is about ready to be capped, they jump off and they jump into the, um, they jump into the larva before it's capped. This is actually a good, a good uh, frame because it's got a lot of open larva. So this would be a good one to, to shake. And I don't see the queen on this one. So I'm going to put this one over here and I'm probably going to shake this one. Let's look at this uh, frame up close. Let me blow on it. And you can see there's the open larva. They're starting to fill these with some eggs. Queen is laying. And then they're starting to grow into the larva. And so those are going to be your bees that most likely will have more mites on them. Not saying that obviously the, the mites can be up on the bees that are in the honey supers, but this is where you have a better opportunity to get a more accurate count. If you're just testing the ones that are flying around, um, you might not get a really good count, but you might still have a really good infestation. So really this is the, this is the suggested method is to get them as close to the brood, brood nest as possible. And since this is a one brood nest hive, this is where they're at. So this is a really good frame also half capped I don't see the queen on this one either I'm gonna move this one over to the side it looks like a really good frame I have a feeling she's probably she's usually in the center it just really depends on what kind of what where they're at in the brood cycle as far as if there's an empty frame in the center or if the empty frame is on the outside. And it looks like there's an empty frame in the center here. So they have hatched. That's why there's so many, so many bees. Actually, it looks like there might even be a few, uh, few queen cells starting in this hive because it is so full and we have had so much rain. And so that tends to make them think that they don't have as much space if they're always all in here all the time and they're not flying. Then they get crowded, even though you have the two honey supers on there. But they could also just be the cells that they're starting. I'm just doing a real quick cursory search for the queen. All right. So what we're going to do is we start with uh, alcohol. Put a little bit more in there start with alcohol in our thing we're going to shake bees into here we're going to use our little cup here to scoop them out and so what's going to happen is you're going to get lots of bees that go into your bucket some of them are going to be able to fly and they're going to fly away but many of them are the young nurse bees that are taking care of your newly laid eggs and brood and those are typically the ones that you want to use and so let's take this frame that we showed you with all the all of the stuff we're just going to shake these bees down in here and see they're the young bees so they don't they don't all really know how to fly yet and so what you want to do is you just want to take a scoop, which is, this is about one cup of bees here, and throw them in the alcohol, put the lid on, and shake. See, you don't use the rest of those. You can go right back into the hive. No harm, no foul. They're going to go right back to doing what they were doing. 10 minutes they won't even remember that you were here so now we're going to take this make sure that you seal it and really shake you want to shake this for at least one minute vigorously shaking bee scientists have said that this is the best way to get a really good count 
If you don't shake it for long enough or vigorously enough, your mites may stick to the bees, which is why you don't really want to use water. Some people use windshield wiper fluid with good results because it has some alcohol in it. It's mostly alcohol, a little water, and what I'm using is isopropyl alcohol, which is what, 97% alcohol and 3% water. So just remember, if you've done all this work, don't skimp on the shaking. I'm not gonna bore you with one minute of shaking, but that's what you should do. Okay, before we get to uh, looking at the mic count, I know everybody wants to see the mic count, but we're gonna put this beehive back together because it's starting to uh, spit rain here. sample and go to a little bit calmer place and look at them Let's see how many mites we have okay I've got my white bus tub here got the uh, easy shake still shaking and this is what it looks like when you uh, take them out they're all drowned, unfortunately. They don't make it, but remember, if you don't do this, your whole hive could die. So now I'm just gonna take all of this alcohol and dump it in the bus tub and look for varroa mites. You could also dump it into a uh, coffee filter, cheesecloth. You also wanna check your container here to make sure that there's none in here. Looks like there's could be one on the side here. There's one down here. Let's see if you can see that. Let's see if I can focus. Yeah, it looks like it might be focusing. See that little guy? That is a varomite right there. So that's how small they are. And you can see in the background there's a couple four or five so let me do a count here and see what I can see I got my glasses on and I got uh, let me get a stick here so we got the one that's on my finger throw that in there so you can see now that it's in the liquid that's the same thing as these so we got one two three four that's not one, that's a piece of dirt or something, even though it looks the same. Because these are, see how these are, you probably can't see it in the camera, but these are light brown or copper. So there's one, two, three, four. It's a piece of dirt, but over here is five. And that, I think that's one. So I'm gonna say six, which is, uh, is a really good uh, a really good count and I probably was over a cup of bees because I got overzealous there and I grabbed that whole bowl and I think that bowl was like a cup and a half but it doesn't matter I'm just gonna call it six and I'll show you how to do the math with a six mic count and we'll talk about what you should do next so here is the math we have 300 bees per half cup I used one cup of bees so that equals 600 bees we found six mites divided by 600 bees equals a 1% mite count. Now this is considered an acceptable mite count if it was fall, but it's not fall, so I will be doing some type of treatment. Here is the guidance we get from the bee scientists. Mite counts from 1% to 2% are acceptable. 2 to 3% you should consider some type of treatment, and above 3% your bees are at risk of perishing. Again, the information that I read said these are fall mite counts. My recommendation is if you have any kind of a mite count in the spring or summer that you treat your hives with some kind of a soft treatment such as oxalic acid, formic acid, or thymol. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about testing for mites. Until next time, be extraordinary.